Welcome to the video from the digitallifestyle.com. This video we're going to have a look at the Windows 10 Fall Update 2015 or also known as the Threshold 2 release of Windows 10. So this is the first major update to Windows 10 that's coming uh, out to uh, the public. Uh, the, all the features and, that you're going to see in this have been available in the previous builds for users on Windows Insider program where they released test versions of Threshold 2 over the last few months since uh, at the end of July really since the release of Windows 10 and this is a quick look at some of the features that are going to be in the update. So we're going to start with the start menu. There's a few different changes to this. You'll notice the menus have all got a consistent look and feel to them. Now one of the nice changes on this is an extra row of tiles here. This makes a big difference so you don't get all this space around the edges especially when you're using it in portrait mode and uh, I can show where those settings are. Ah, and here, but just before we go, jump to that, you've seen one of the new features of Windows 10 is and I've already got two snapped apps, I'm opening this third app and it's asking me where do I want to put it, so I can put it there and that nicely snaps it to the side, that's new in Windows 10 so here we've got this option there, show more tiles and you can see what it looks like when you're in the desktop mode, it adds an extra row of tiles so here's the setting, show more tiles, I'm going to turn that off at the moment so we've got three and three. If I put it on, on the tablet you can, into uh, portrait mode, you can see you get these large columns of space there. Let's flip this around. Show more tiles. You've got to add your tiles in, so I'll just try dragging these over just to show you what I mean. You can put them in like that, and fill them up. But more importantly, when you're in portrait mode and you can see you've now got the extra tiles and I can you've now got the extra tiles on there and I can fill that up and make better use of the space and so I think that's really good especially for tablet users but it also uh, it's the same on the desktop as well if I take it out of tablet mode and hit start you'll see what I mean you've got that extra extra row there We've got some extra colour modes as well, in fact let me just go back out of tablet mode to show you what I mean by this. If we open an explore window, you see we've got the nice blue title bar on there. The blue title bar on there shows you the extra colour options, let me just, you can see what I mean by that. And that's because in these colours we've got these um, extra colour options there. Up on the lock screen, you can choose whether you want the uh, your Windows picture on the lock screen or not. So that should do it without the lock. Let's uh, so that should be off. So that's with the um, image off, and I can toggle it back on again, and you get the image as it was in the original build with the Windows back, uh, image on the background. Oh, mentioning tiles as well, you, you previously could only have 512 tiles, you can now have 2048, so you can have a lot of tiles on the start screen. Right, some other changes we've got. Um, there's the new Skype messaging apps, so on here you can, you don't have to use the desktop version of Skype, you've now got the uh, modern version, so this is a Windows 10 app, uh, it's a universal app, you get this on the phone as well. So you can have messages, you can do Skype calls, and you can do uh, audio calls and video calls through here. I've actually recorded a full video of this, so um, I'll include a link to that along with the video and you can watch that for, for yourself. So the new Skype app is in there. We've got Skype messaging, Skype video, and Skype phone. So there's me making a Skype call to uh, a test account. And like I said, you can have video modes and you could just have audio modes on there. One thing, good thing about this, all the, the Skype notifications come through in Action Center and with a pop-up and you can actually reply directly to a Skype test, test message. Speaking of text messages as well, you can do use Cortana, there's a few changes to Cortana but you can do a text in Cortana. You can send a text from Cortana and that goes via your phone. So you need a Windows 10 phone and uh, you can send the text message from here uh, via, via your phone. It'll also show missed calls uh, on here 
uh, when you get phone calls on your Windows 10 phone and it'll come through on here. So it's the start of the integration that they're doing between Windows 10 Mobile and the PC version. So I could send a test here. Um, I'll send it to. I can send that like that. And that sent a text message. Other changes include are on uh, Microsoft Edge, the Windows browser. A couple of new things on this one. Here you've got Cast to Cast Media to device. So what that will do will send whatever's on this page, this picture in this case, to a DLNA receiver or a Miracast receiver. So I can uh, you can work with music or audio, works with videos as well, YouTube videos, and you just do Cast to device and then it will find your uh, or find DLNA receivers on the, your network here. So you've got to be on the same network as the DLNA receiver and then you can uh, you can then send that. So it works for YouTube videos, uh, like I said, podcast, mute streaming, anything that's the audio that's on here or the video that's on the screen or the picture that's on the screen, you can send through. So here you can see I've done, t so I go here, cast me to device, it picks up my Surface Pro, which has got Windows Media Player on it, and do that, and then it will then send my video over to the Surface Pro, uh, my Surface Pro 3 over here, uh, using the network. So the um, devices all need to be on the same network, and discovery enabled and so on, but that will then start beaming that over, and I can show you that video is playing there on my uh, Surface Pro 3, and that seems to be working all quite nicely. So there's it on Surface Pro 3, and that's being beamed here from this uh, Windows 10 tablet. Uh, it works, like I said, it works for audio, it works for pictures as well. Quite a nice, a nice uh, neat function that I really like that. Something else that's new in Edge is these preview tabs, so you can hover over like that, and you get a preview of the tabs. A little thing, but um, if I go on that one, hover over there, You'll see that tab on there. Little thing, but nice, uh, nice to be able to uh, see. Doesn't work with um, with touch, obviously, but uh, it's the hover it works quite nicely uh, on there. So one thing that's new now is the synchronized favorites and reading lists. So this is my favorites bar, uh, or my favorites, and they're synchronized between Threshold Two devices. So that's the same on my other uh, Windows 10 Threshold 2 devices. It doesn't sync with the oh, original Windows 10 builds, but uh, when you get the new ones, then these will all sync together. And the reading lists are also synchronized as well, which I think is really good. Um, the more synchronized they are, the better. It'd be, it'd be nice if you could just open existing tabs and things like that on the, on the, on each device. So you could start on here and open another tab and so on, but that isn't in a, enabled yet. There's a lot of on the HUD changes actually with uh, with Edge. It just feels a lot more stable. The whole operating system feels a lot more stable as well. There were some other uh, under the HUD changes. Uh, Cortana, like I said, mentioned, can do text and um, Mr. Call notification, but Cortana can also read PDF files. So if you're viewing a PDF file in Edge, you can tap and hold and do uh, oh, ask Cortana. There's improved memory management in well, Windows 10 now. It actually compresses the page memory. So what that means is when Windows starts to use up all your physical memory and starts to create virtual memory, it compresses that before it um, before it starts using it, so it's more efficient with the memory management, and, and so you have less swap files on your hard drive, which means faster access and so on, uh, which is great on small devices like this little Encore 8. And Hyper-V, if you're in Hyper-V, you can now host Hyper-V as well, so you can have Hyper-V on Hyper-V, which is good if you're, uh, you've got test systems with Hyper-V and you want to test deployment of Hyper-V, then you can do that if you've got a nice big machine. In terms of activation as well, you can also activate Windows 10 now with a Windows 7, 8 or 8.1 key. So you can do a clean install of uh, the fall update and then uh, use your Windows 7, 8 or 8.1 key and uh, that will activate. Now many of the apps have been updated, I won't show those on here, but like the Groove Music and so on, but those have been updated uh, throughout the last few months since Windows 10 was released. The main new ones are these messaging ones which I showed earlier. So that's the main changes to uh, this uh, fall update of Windows 10. Notice here on Win version, it's showing as version 5.15.11. And then the build is 10586. On the release version of Windows 10, it just says version Windows 10.
uh, version 10. So that's showing that this is the November 15, uh, 2015 release of Windows 10 and there'll be another uh, release next year, codename Redstone, which has new features in it as well. 10.5.8.6 is the build that this is from the Windows Insider program, the final build. Notice um, if you look at some of our other Insider build previews that we've recorded videos, it had the watermark there, that's gone, so that's how we know that this is going to be the final version. So overall, it's a nice incremental update to Windows 10. It feels very fast and smooth. Uh, it definitely feels uh, more, it's definitely got more refinement than the release of uh, 10 to 40, the initial release of Windows 10. As you'd expect, they've fixed quite a few issues. I do like the DLNA casting from Edge browser, the new messaging apps, and the synchronization of your favorites and reading lists. Those, and the, the four rows of columns, uh, of tiles as well, I should say. So those are my favorite features of this build. So that's a quick overview. Um, there is more stuff under the hood, but uh, you can follow along with um, what we get, what in Windows Insiders get on our YouTube channel, uh, on, on Twitter at Dixon. Thanks for watching this video. Bye.